InfluxDB is a popular open source time series database designed to handle high volumes of timestamp data. It is commonly used for collecting, storing, and analyzing time series data, which is data that is indexed and organized by time. Time series data often comes from sensors, monitoring devices, application logs, financial data, and other sources where each data point is associated with a specific timestamp. InfluxDB is a NoSQL database because it does not use SQL for its data manipulation and querying. It uses its own query language that is specifically designed for working with time series data. We will see how to install InfluxDB on Windows. In another tutorial, we will see how to use visualization tool to display time series data. Let's go to InfluxDB main page. We will install the open source version. Let's click on Install InfluxDB. You can select which operating system you want to install InfluxDB on. On my case I'm going to install it on Windows. You can see the requirements right below. Let's now download and install InfluxDB version 2.0. Once downloaded the file we have to extract it to a given location. We can simply go to download folder and execute the commands in the PowerShell. Do not forget to run the PowerShell as administrator. We will extract to a specific destination and rename the file. On my case I've already executed these two commands so I'll not do it again. Once done the steps above we will have to start InfluxDB. By default, InfluxDB sends telemetry data back to InfluxData. The InfluxData telemetry page provides information about what data is collected and how it is used. To opt out of sending telemetry data back to InfluxData, include the reporting disabled flag when starting Influxed. We can disable with the command Influxed reporting disabled. The initial setup process for InfluxDB walks through creating a default organization, user, bucket, and operator API token. The setup process is available in both the InfluxDB user interface, UI, and in the Influx command line interface, CLI. We will use the user interface. Visit localhost 8086. Then you'll have to set up your user that is defining. Username password, organization name, bucket name. If you want you can also install Influx CLI. It is particular handy to manage many aspects of InfluxDB. This tutorial however will not cover the installation of the Influx CLI. After the installation is completed, let's clarify the basic concepts of InfluxDB. The InfluxDB data model organizes time series data into buckets and measurements. A bucket is an entity that can contain multiple measurements. Measurements on their side contain multiple tags and fields. Tags are key value pairs with values that differ, but do not change often. Tags are meant for storing metadata. Fields are key value pairs with values that change over time like prices, temperature, etc. Timestamp is associated to each measurement. Let's now analyze a first short code about how to connect to InfluxDB with Python and how to populate it with some fake data. If you go to the local URL at point 3 you will be able to open the InfluxDB web UI. You can follow Python instructions to get the token and to use which command to run to create some measurements and query them. First of all we have to import InfluxDB underscore client library. We have to establish a connection to InfluxDB. For that we need to pass the URL for the connection and the token we have created previously. Once the connection is established, we need to instantiate the right API. 
we will firstly add some fake data and then we will query them. For that we can iterate a finite number of times and create a point object that will be written to InfluxDB. Therefore, a point object is simply a representation of a data point that can be written to an InfluxDB database. We have to specify a name for the measurement we're adding and a tag and field. Write method allows to write the data to a specific bucket. After writing we add a sleep command in order to add a delay between each measurement. After writing the data, we can query the database to retrieve them back. So, let's instantiate the query API. As you can observe the syntax is different from that of SQL databases. Indeed, as outlined at the start of this video we saw that InfluxDB is a NoSQL database, thus it has its own language to query data. Let's break down the InfluxDB query step by step. 1. From. Bucket. Personal this is the first part of the query, where you specify the source bucket from which the data will be retrieved. 2. Range. Start. Minus 10m. The range function is used to filter the data based on a time range. In this case, it is set to retrieve data for the last 10 minutes. The time range is specified relative to the current time. 3. Filter fn r equals a dot underscore measurement equals equals measurement 1. The filter function is used to apply a filter condition to the data based on specific criteria. Here, the filter condition is defined using a lambda function, anonymous function, that takes a single parameter r, representing the data record being processed. With the method query we can pass our custom query. We will get the tables of measurements. We have to iterate them and the available records to retrieve the data. Let's execute the code and display the output. As expected we wrote 10 values to the database and we get back 10 values. In the next part of the script we're going to see a different kind of query that allows to do some aggregations of the available values. We can execute again the code and analyze the output. I hope you enjoyed this introduction about how to work with InfluxDB with Python. Do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.